In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Greetings, beloved of the Lord, and welcome. Today is Monday, the 25th of October, 2021. It is Monday of the 30th week in Ordinary Time, Church Year B. You are listening to Catholic Meditation. I am Reverend Father Blessed. Amba Njume, good morning and thanks for joining us. Let us pray. Almighty ever living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity, and make us love what you command so that we may merit what you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The first reading is taken from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans, chapter 8, verses 12 to 17. The responsorial psalm is taken from Psalm 68. The response to the psalm is, This God of ours is a God who saves. The gospel is taken from St. Luke, chapter 13, verses 10 to 17. I read from the Gospel. At that time, Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath, and there was a woman who had had a spirit of infirmity for 18 years. She was bent over and could not fully straighten herself. And when Jesus saw her, he called her and said to her, Woman, you are freed from your infirmity. And he laid his hands upon her, and immediately she was made straight, and she praised God. But the ruler of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath, said to the people, There are six days on which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be healed, and not on the Sabbath day. Then the Lord answered him, you hypocrites, does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the manger and lead it away to water it? And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for eighteen years, be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day? As he said this, all his adversaries were put to shame, and all the people rejoiced at the glorious things that were done by him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
The theme for today's meditation is Remain in the church. Don't run away. Jesus will see you. Remain in the church. Don't run away. Jesus will see you. Beloved of God, our meditation this morning is drawn mainly from the gospel passage. The episode is divided in two parts. First, it is the encounter and action of Jesus towards the woman who had been sick for 18 years. And second, is the response of the ruler of the synagogue towards Jesus' action. The scene is in the synagogue. It is a Sabbath day. And of course, you remember the law of the Sabbath. No work, no healing is allowed. In that synagogue is a crowd listening to Jesus as he preaches. In that very crowd, is a woman who has been sick for 18 years and she is crippled on account of her sickness. This is our first point of focus. Jesus encounters the woman and makes an action. She has been sick for 18 years, yet she never left the synagogue. She rather persists in her synagogue attendance and prayer. It is in that synagogue that Jesus meets her and calls her and heals her. She insists on being in God's presence. She remains in the church. She perseveres in her faith in God and at the end it pays off. She gets her reward. She is healed. Where do you go to with your own infirmities? Do you run away from the church? Or do you remain in the church? Unlike this woman, many are the Christians who when plagued by one infirmity or calamity, they are losing faith. They are losing patience. And they are losing hope in God. They lose all confidence in the church. For them, God seems to delay. For them, the church seems to have failed. They are in a hurry. They run from one church to another. They run from one pastor to another seeking solutions. This woman teaches us a great lesson. God is in his church. Oh yes. She assures us as the psalm of today says, This God of ours is a God who saves. Like her, we do not need to feel God is absent. Do not run away from the church. God is present. He is there. Keep going to church, beloved. Don't think the church has failed. Don't stay away. Jesus will find you as he finds this woman. He too will call you by name and heal you. For 18 years, this woman did not stay away. For 18 years, she did not give up church or visit soothsayers or prophets. She stayed in the church till Jesus found her. Some have left the church because they too have been sick for years, but have had no healing. Jesus is coming too for you, as he did for the woman. Today may be your day as it was for this woman. Will Jesus find you in the church, or will you be absent? Will he find you, or perhaps you would have long gone away? Now, the second point of focus is the reaction of the ruler of the synagogue. He is not happy with Jesus' action because he has healed on the Sabbath. As far as he is concerned, Jesus has broken the law. His concern is not the help Jesus gives 
and the feeling this woman has for being healed. No. His concern is the law that Jesus has broken. For him, the woman can die for all he cares. Sabbath is Sabbath, no healing. Jesus' response to him brings out today's second lesson. Love for the human person is above any other law. Some of us treat our dogs, cats, and animals at home with more respect and love than we do to human beings. Our dogs are insured. They are well fed. But we pass by hungry human beings. Some of us take care of our property, things that are vanity, but we will not show even a little care to one human person. We are not different from this ruler of the synagogue. We place more value to other things over the human being. We see this mentality eating us deep. People will rather contribute money for funerals than contribute to assist the same person while they were sick and alive. We sometimes even get offended that money was used to help someone in need. So did the synagogue ruler prefer to see the woman continue in her sickness? Could he not be happy for her? No. For all he cared, the law must not be broken. She could be sick and even die on the Sabbath. It is the same reaction we have with sinners. If a recalcitrant child is welcomed back home, some of his siblings are offended. He should be punished, not loved. And many of us are offended because God keeps showing love to sinners. This is what I choose to describe as the elder brother syndrome, drawing from the parable of the prodigal son. The elder brother was not happy that his brother, yes, who was a sinner, had come back home. And same with us, many of us. We are angry with God, angry at him because he shows love to sinners. They should be punished. You may gladly say they should be punished and even kicked out of the church. You think you may never fall till you too fall and are in need of that very mercy. The ruler of the synagogue could emphasize the law because, of course, it was not he who was in pain or in sickness. But I tell you, if it were he or his relative suffering, the law would have meant nothing. Treat others as you would want yourself treated. If you can love your animals and do good to them even on the Sabbath, how much more human beings created in the image and likeness of God? This is the challenge Jesus gave the ruler of the synagogue. How many of you take your ox or your donkey out on the Sabbath to water them? How much more this daughter of Abraham? Oh, dear God's good people, no law is above the law of the human person. And for this reason, Jesus insists, love of God and love of neighbor, you have kept the entire law. What is your attitude towards those who suffer? What is your attitude towards sinners and their coming back into the fold? Let us pray that God will give us that grace to have an open mind and an open heart. Not to look at the law above love of neighbor, but to prize every human being above every other law. And as for you and for me, who are undergoing any kind of calamity or infirmity, do not lose faith in God. Do not lose faith in the church. The church has not failed. God has not failed. Do not run away. He may just be coming for you today as he did for the woman who had been suffering for 18 years. Stay strong. Remain in the church. God is coming for you and he will heal you. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son and the Holy Spirit come on you and remain with you forever. Amen. We wish each and every one of you a blessed new week.